Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I received. It was sent to me by one of our listeners. Then we had to translate this message. This is the translation of the message that was sent to me. The translation reads like this. How are you, my brother? Can you please post for me as anonymous? I have my own story to tell. I used to work in South Africa. When I was working there in South Africa, I was working for a particular Indian family. I was working as a stay in maid. But this Indian family that I used to work for, they didn't like me to be outdoors. They always wanted me to be indoors all the times, not going anywhere. So I stayed for a very long time as a single lady. Then after that, that was when I met a man who was working for a company that used to maintain the roads there in South Africa. But this man, he was from Zim as well. But the way that he used to dress when I started dating him, I was suspicious that this man, he might be a prophet, but I had never bothered to ask him. The more that we started dating, that was when I realized that this man was a prophet. And my brother, this man, he used to make a lot of money because most of his customers, they were wealthy South Africans. What these wealthy customers of his would do is that they would come to the location where you were staying. Then they would consult with him. After consulting with him, some of them, they would hire him so that they can take him to their businesses so that he can strengthen their businesses. Some of them would come so as to protect their homes after consulting with him. So my then husband would go with them to those people's houses so that he can do some prayers that were going to protect their houses from witches. My husband made so much money that we actually managed to buy a residential stand. This was in Masingo when we were still there in South Africa. The money was just flowing in and it was a lot of money. But we later sold this residential stand. This was after we had relocated back to Zim and after my husband had sacrificed our unborn child. But when we were still in South Africa, my husband once helped this very wealthy South African family. That family had came to consult with him like like the rest of the people that used to come to the house where we were renting in that location so as to consult with him so when this couple came it was because their child could no longer walk properly he had this sort of a weird disability after they had consulted with my husband then my husband worked on that child like magic because my husband assisted that family he later told me that the South African couple that had came to consult with him, they had a relative who had gone to get money, but he was given a horn. This horn that was given to him, it overflowed with oil, and that relative of theirs was now using the oil that overflowed from that horn in his shop so as to attract his customers. But all of these rituals, they were supposed to be given something in return. Then in the process, of him doing all of those rituals he then used that couple's child hence the child had a very weird disability that made him not to walk properly because of the rituals that were performed on him my husband assisted this family by magically removing the horn that had been planted into their child's leg and the child was instantly healed that couple later called my husband when that couple called my husband, they then told him that he was supposed to come to the police station because that was where they were. When we heard that these people were requesting my husband to come to the police station, we were both scared. But my husband said that I never robbed these people, so I should go. But I was really scared for him. But he said that in his spirit, he was feeling that everything was going to be okay. But when he went there, my husband went with his younger brother. When they were at the police station, I was really scared. I didn't know what to do anymore. But when they arrived at the police station, that was when I received a phone call. This phone call was from my husband and he was shouting and saying that, 
This South African couple had gifted him with a car when he arrived at the police station. That South African couple handed him the papers to their car and then they told him that this was a gift from them to him and for him to believe it they wanted to make sure that the car was going to be checked out so that he can believe that the car that they wanted to give him was not a stolen car after they had done all the processes and signing of the documents since my husband did not have a license there was this other man who was from zim who was staying in the same location that was the man that i went with to town because he had a license and we came back with that gift that we had been given to my husband by his customers my husband kept on making a lot of money but then lockdown happened when the lockdown came my husband could not make money anymore from assisting his customers life got so hard to such an extent that i felt like divorcing my husband because i could not take it anymore then my husband spoke with his friend who was also a prophet but this man he was in zim and then that man encouraged my husband to visit him there in zim so that he can give him some extra healing powers and this was during the hard lockdowns when we traveled back to zim we had no choice because we were starving we had to cross the limpopo river on foot the journey was really hard but we finally made it to that prophet's home it was in the villages but when we arrived there what bothered me my brother was that my husband's friend even though he was a prophet and he went to church but his wife was a very powerful traditional healer so i could not understand the connection that was between him and his wife to make it worse the traditional healer was the one that was supposed to give my husband prophetic and healing powers with this confusing scenario i then refused to enter into the consulting room because i was pregnant so i was afraid of doing stuff that will end up affecting my pregnancy that i was carrying but my husband was then instructed to come out of the consulting room so that he can call me because the rituals were supposed to be done when i am present in the consulting room when i entered into the consulting room following my husband when we sat down that was when that traditional ila told my husband that he had done such a good thing by bringing his pregnant wife for the ritual my husband was then made to swear an oath that i could not even understand my husband kept on saying yes to everything that was asked of him that has that was how my husband sacrificed my unborn child my husband was then given a black clay pot which was designed in such a way that its outer layer looked like a living being my husband was then given a knife and he was then instructed what he was supposed to do with that knife he was told that he was supposed to stab as if he was stabbing something that he could see inside that black clay pot but the way that he was supposed to stab the inside of that black clay pot he was supposed to press and push the knife after my husband had done all of these rituals that is how he got his prophetic powers after the consultation was done that was when we decided to go and visit my husband's relatives first before i could travel and visit my parents when we arrived at my husband's relative that was when i started to feel a painful period and this bothered me a lot knowing that you cannot experience a period pain when you are pregnant after that 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 was when i then started bleeding that was how i lost my first pregnancy after this my husband started attracting wealth customers but my brother i think that my husband used my womb to get his powers because when i gave birth i gave birth to a stillborn baby and my husband said that even if we are going to die without having a child it is fine by him he said that we can actually look for a surrogate mother he said if you want i can look for a surrogate mother for you but what hurts me the most is that the way that he attracts his customers he is very dishonest what he does is that 
if you come and consult with him, he will give you some prayers so as to help you. But if he sees that you have very deep pockets, after you are gone, you will then start to make some prayers so as to cause a lot of problems in your life. And after you start to experience all of those problems, you will be left with no choice but to come back and to be given more prayers, meaning that you will keep on giving my husband a lot of money. Right now, my brother, we are currently staying here in Zim. As tough as life is here in Zim, but we are living a high quality life here in Zim because of what my husband is doing. Dear listeners, Rave was a message that was sent to me by one of our listeners. Just imagine that you visit a prophet thinking that you are going to be assisted. Then after being prayed for, another prayer will be done upon your life so that you can face more problems and return back to that prophet.